Oh, this no, this is cool because it feels like a regular studio session. I'm like equally as disappointed as like a regular one. <laughs> Yeah. UA's first exchange student program was a huge success. We gave Deku a new rival in the form of Naruto Uzumaki, and we found a new BFF for Aoyama, Giorno Giovanna. Now let's keep the good vibes flowing because this time we're bringing Hero. <clears throat> um, it's, uh, we're actually doing villains this time. Wait, like villains? Like, are you serious? You're bringing villains into a high school that had already been attacked at least three times. Why? Why? Hey, don't look at me. Look at the comment section. They're all asking for villains. Why? Why do y'all? Okay, okay, fine. Uh, today, I guess we're just gonna be putting students' lives in danger with My Hero Academia Exchange Students of uh, Villains Edition. Don't know why I just didn't do more heroes first, but all right. Okay, so I've got to start with one of my favorite villains from one of my favorite anime, Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter. Hisoka is obsessed with finding new potential rivals, so it'd be impossible to keep him away from UA, especially considering his track record with... What, what do you mean by that? You know what? Never mind. We're just continue. He's pretty much doing what All Might did when he came to teach, but, you know, in a morally bankrupt way. Luckily for him, he's a master at infiltration and easily convinces Principal Nezu that he'd be a perfect substitute teacher in the Department of Management. Hisoka may have superpowers, but his marketing sense puts him above the rest. Using his quirk, texture surprise, Hisoka has become a powerful influencer. Move aside, gentle criminal, Hisoka's actually evil, and he's way better at self-promotion. He's pretty much the Jeffree Star of the My Hero universe. When his scrambled eggs look less than appetizing, he just throws a little texture surprise on top, and voila! They're facetuned into looking like a gram-worthy omurice. When he wakes up with a zit, he could cover it with his signature clown makeup, but why bother? Texture surprise will conceal the it and give him the jawline of a god. It's basically like a real life filter that he can apply at any time. Hell, he put a little texture surprise on his resume to land the job at UA in the first place. Hisoka's super charismatic, despite being one of the creepiest dudes in all of anime. The Hunter Organization, the Phantom Troop, UA, the League of Villains, the Shia Hisaikai, Hisoka has all of their trust. Oh yeah. Hisoka's totally a double agent, or maybe like a, like a triple agent. It, it's hard to keep track, but remember how they never found the mole from season one of My Hero Academia? It was Hisoka the whole time. He just got bored of reporting back to Shigaraki. That's my personal headcanon. The Shia Hisaikai are more in his jam. Ever since his adventures in York New City, he's had a thing for messing with the mob. But when he meets Eri, she becomes his new priority. Sure, being a part of multiple criminal organizations is cool and all, but with one look at Eri, he recognizes her incredible power. He'll do anything to ensure that he can face off against her in the future. So when Deku, Mirio, and the rest of the hero crew break into the Shia Hisaikai hideout, Hisoka secretly helps them with Aerie's rescue. Still, I have a feeling he wouldn't mesh with all the teachers and pro heroes at UA. Lunch Rush doesn't appreciate Hisoka always doctoring up his cafeteria food to look like hashtag lunch goals. And Hisoka's menacing vibes gives Eraserhead a headache. Hisoka does have one ally though. Present Mike. He's the only teacher at UA who likes every single one of Hisoka's social media posts. And when Hisoka randomly stops showing up to work one day, it's Present Mike who announces that it's probably because he just received a very lucrative brand deal from one of the hero agencies. He doesn't have time for small time operations like UA anymore. The next villain is also a pro at infiltration, but her specialty is posing as the school nurse. When Medusa Gorgon shows up at UA, Recovery Girl is a little confused. Medusa doesn't seem to have a healing quirk, but she is super interested in taking blood samples from the UA students. She does have a lab coat, so she must be qualified, right? She's pretty helpful whenever Recovery Girl is overwhelmed. Like in the provisional hero license exam, but Medusa still has some extra time on her hands. So she takes it upon herself to start working as a guidance counselor. Mineta takes one look at the new teacher's tattoos and books himself an appointment. But when it comes time for his appointment, he's pretty weirded out. It seems like the new guidance counselor's tattoos are alive. Medusa catches Mineta staring at her ink and tells him not to worry. The living tattoos are just her quirk, snake charmer. Medusa then strongly suggests Mineta look into alternative means to improve his quirk. Work. She promises him power, more power than he could ever imagine. She just has to give him a little blood transfusion. Thankfully, Mineta's a wimp and chickens out before she can inject him with the black blood. For her next victim, I, I, I mean uh, a student in need of guidance, Medusa calls on Tokoyami. After seeing him training his quirk, Dark Shadow, she
she's pretty sure he's already got some black blood coursing through his veins. And he seems to have a relationship with what is probably a demon blade already. Imagine her disappointment when she finds out that Dark Shadow is just like an emo ghost. Uh, luckily, Medusa has something or someone to keep her distracted. A Razorhead is clearly my hero's version of Dr. Stein, and if you don't agree, you can fight me. Like the brilliant doctor, Eraserhead has a bit of darkness in his nature, and out of everyone on staff, he's most suspicious of the new nurse. Luckily for her, Medusa's using Soul Protect, a spell that conceals her witchy nature. Even if Eraserhead gives Medusa the cold shoulder, she can always shift her focus to UA's mysterious new substitute teacher. Yes, Naruto's very own Snake Man is on UA's payroll. We really gotta work with the hiring staff on this. This is getting concerning. Orochimaru is a master manipulator, so you know he can BS his way through any job interview. I mean, Orochimaru has a solid enough resume as a mentor. <laughs> Obviously, Orochimaru needs a new apprentice, so what better place to look than UA? They desperately need a science teacher anyway. Ectoplasm teaches math, Midnight teaches history, Cementos teaches literature, Present Mike teaches friggin' English. UA needs to add some STEM to its curriculum, okay? And when he's not teaching the periodic table, Mr. Orochimaru is scouting out his new personal trainee to corrupt. Bakugo's got a mean streak, but all that yelling we get on Orochimaru's nerves. Real quick, he needs somebody more brooding. Ah, Shinso would be perfect. Having Shinso's brainwashing quirk by his side would make him practically unstoppable. And besides, Shinso already resents some of his classmates for having more hero-like quirks, so turning him to the dark side might not be too tricky. Like, I can just picture Orochimaru giving him some extra help. Remember, Shinso, carbon is a solid at room temperature. Also, you should betray all your friends and family. Okay, okay. So let's say Orochimaru gets Shinso to come work for him. But to what end? Well, after Orochimaru cleans all the buns and burners at UA, he moonlights for the League of Villains as their chief Nomu scientist. Orochimaru works for All for One and even stops by Tartarus to kiss his ass every once in a while, but it's all to fuel his own goals. He's experimenting to push quirks to their absolute limit. That's where his quirk, Splice, comes into play. With enough DNA, he can blend two subjects' blood together and mix their quirks. With Toga collecting blood for him, he just keeps blending and blending, making more elaborate Nomus. Oh, and now they all look like snakes. I mean, I get it. Orochimaru has to maintain his brand recognition. And once he creates a perfect Nomu, he'll splice his own DNA into it. When he splices his DNA, his soul goes right along with it, allowing him to hop into a new, invincible, unstoppable body. But if all of Orochimaru's planes blow up in his face, he'll always have Habuka Mongoose to fall back on. She'll forever be his apprentice, even if she doesn't realize it. Oh yeah, and he and Medusa Gorgon are definitely banging. Like, come on. Every school has those two teachers who were totally hooking up on the weekends. Like, come on. These two both have a very specific interest in snakes. Uh, so you can like probably figure out what's going on there. Uh, so everyone at UA knows about Miss Medusa and Mr. Orochimaru. And yet the real topic of conversation is that new, suave, charming student in the Department of Management, Dio Brando. For the record, this is lowercase Dio, not all caps stand wielding Dio. So yeah, no broken time stopping abilities. Give it about like a hundred or so years. Actually, when Dio first enrolls in UA, he's quirkless. Evil, but, but quirkless. He's studying under Mr. Hosoka in the Department of Management to be a venture capitalist. So, you know, a different flavor of evil. But even without Zawardo! Time stands still when you catch a glimpse of this dashing young English aristocrat. All right, but wait, how the hell did Dio get into UA without a quirk? Well, when Principal Nezu was at a conference in England, he got cornered in an alleyway by a stray cat. Lucky for him, Dara Brando was passed out drunk in that alley. He woke up and kicked the cat as hard as he could, scaring it off. Not to say Nezu, but just because, you know, he's a dick. Either way, Nezu was grateful to Dario and promised to admit any and all of his kids into his school for heroes. So the only letter of acceptance that Dio ever had was the one Dario wrote to Nezu on his deathbed after, you know, Dio poisoned him. Once Dio's in UA, he quickly becomes king of the management department. Seriously, all of the students and all of the teachers love this kid. And even without a quirk, he's the star of UA's rugby team. Yes, they have a rugby team and you can't prove to me they don't. Still, Dio lays low his first year and returns to England for summer vacation. Well, on his first day back to school, Dio brings in his cool new stone mask for show and tell. Yes, 
yes, the management classes have show and tell, and you can't prove to me that they don't. From there, he heads straight into the guidance office and asks Mrs. Medusa to transfer him into the hero classes. He also enrolls exclusively in night school, no questions asked. Theo's always been a trendsetter at UA, but before long, the night classes are overflowing with UA students. See, when Dio put on that stone mask over vacation, he acquired his new vampiric quirk, Phantom Blood. Get it? Because that's the that was the name of the arc. Yeah. By biting other heroes or making them wear his stone mask, he can turn them into his thralls. He's also much stronger and faster, but he can't be in sunlight. Okay, okay. He, he's just he's just a vampire. But he still has those little flesh buds. They let Dio control other students without turning them into full-on vampires, so he can have a daytime army of quirk users too. So between his quirk and his stone mask support item, Dio's building his hero army. Students at UA are obsessed with him. They quote Dio, they draw pictures of Dio, they even make memes of Dio. You know, they're JoJo's fans. But not everyone falls for his charm. First of all, Dio can't flush Bud Mirio because it would just fall through his head. And Todoroki knows daddy issues when he sees them, so he stays away. Actually, with his fire and frost power, he's probably the best equipped student to go Vampire Slayer and rescue UA from Dio's perfectly manicured clutches. While Dio's ruling from the shadows, UA still has another tyrant to deal with by day. The ever-fabulous, iron-fisted Satsuki Kiryuin. Yes, the tyrannical student council president of Hanoji Academy is transferring to UA. To consolidate her power at this so-called hero school, she marches straight into the administrative office and lets them know who's in charge. Oh, and she has her Elite Four posse with her. They're not actually students at UA. They just follow Satsuki everywhere she goes. But before All Might can say, no swords in school, Satsuki insults his oversized, ill-fitting suit and makes a beeline for UA's top students in Class 1A. Gamagori smashes through the doorway and Satsuki steps in to scout out who's in charge. Sure enough, Ida's already up and karate chopping at Satsuki. Now that Satsuki's got her target, she activates her quirk, Life Fibers. She's able to manipulate the threads in Ida's uniform and sits his ass back down. Honestly, it's a lot like Best Genius Quirk, but way more stylish. And that's not all Life Fibers can do. Satsuki can imbue entire articles of clothing with super-powered enhancements. She basically turns normal clothes into Goku uniforms, and the uniforms that Satsuki enhances bend to her will. So she mandates brand new Life Fiber-infused uniforms. The old ones look so pedestrian anyway. Sasuke immediately has Mei Hatsume and the support department start creating these uniforms in mass. I mean, Mei's never seen anything like these, so she's totally on board. And to sweeten the deal, Sasuke lets her use her support item, a fancy high-powered sewing machine courtesy of the Revox Corporation. Mei can use this machine to create a legion of Goku uniforms without Sasuke having to be there. Oh, and by the way, uh, we don't make Goku uniforms again the robot, but we do make some pretty cute merch, uh, so uh, be sure to check it out. Like, there's a link in a description. It's just a little slight merch plug, just a little one. Anyway. Now, all of UA is under Satsuki's heel, bound to their Goku uniforms. Satsuki just thinks Ojiko is Mako because she can't be bothered to distinguish between low-class filth with brown hair. It is still stuck at his desk, so at least he's never late for class, but even a razor head can't stop her quirk. Her radiant glare is too strong. Thankfully, there's an underground resistance led by UA's least likely team of freedom fighters. Momo, Hagakure, aka Invisible Girl, and Mineta. They get them as UA's own nudist beach forces. Momo can create replacement uniforms without being detected by Satsuki's watchful servants. Thankfully, Invisible Girl was never forced to wear a uniform because, well, Sasuke didn't even know she was there. She's like the ultimate infiltrator that Nudist Beach wishes they had. And as for Mineta, well, he just wants to see Sasuke and all the other girls at UA. You, you, you know, you know. Between the clown, the snake people, and the stylish despots building their own army, uh, UA is in a bit of disarray. Well, it's time for our next exchange villain to call a PTA meeting. Big Mom is one of the wildest villains to come out of One Piece in a long time, and that's saying something considering these guys exist. As the leader of the Big Mom Pirate, Big Mom has expanded her empire by having nearly 100 children. Holy sh**. <laughs> and she's got a handy quirk. She can give inanimate objects life. Let's imagine she comes to UA when she's at the top of her game with her rubber hose empire, Toto Land, in full swing. I think there's a role she'd fit perfectly into the world of my hero, PTA president. Mom is in her name for a reason, and though Charlotte Linlin can be cruel to her kids, she still needs to take some of that anger out on some of the students and teachers of UA. Big Mom may be a pain in the butt for everyone she encounters, but there is one thing she does exceptionally well, run a 
a bake sale. You know all those security upgrades you I got in season four? Yeah, they were exclusively funded from the proceeds of one very aggressive bake sale. She used her quirk to enchant all the baked goods so they were just begging to be eaten. Uh, literally. Sure, it was super unsettling, but are you gonna say no to Big Mom? Uh, yeah, uh, didn't think so. Of course, all this begs the question, if Big Mom is the PTA president, who's her kid? Well, sorry, Sugar Rush, the obvious answer is you. No! Like, all right, I'm retconning this whole thing. Sue me, quarantine's been tough. As a baker, Sato is in a pretty stressful situation. We've all seen what happens when Big Mom's sweet tooth goes unsatisfied, and Sato's the only one who knows how to scratch the itch. Tragically, because of his mom's enormous appetite, he has only a meager portion of baked goods left for himself at the end of each day. But there's a pro here who's uniquely suited to exactly this type of situation. That's right, I'm making a second Lunch Rush reference in this video because that guy deserves more screen time. Justice for Lunch Rush, please. With his incredible cooking quirk, he's able to keep Big Mom at bay long enough for Sato to whip up some sugary treats of his own. But Big Mom didn't build her empire from having just one kid. I know I'm pretty much completely breaking the canon of the show at this point, but we've got one of the Yonko as a PTA president, so you have to let me play like a little fast and loose here, okay? Imagine that Koji, AKA Anna Voice, is also Big Mom's child. That makes sense, right? Big Mom can animate literally anything, including clouds and trees. It stands to reason that her kid might have a similar power. With Big Mom controlling anything inanimate and Koji in charge of all animals, they'd be a pretty major threat. You know what? F it. I'm just gonna make Kanoko Komori their sister. You know, the mushroom making girl. So now Big Mom can use her quirk on Kanoko shrooms to create a living mushroom army. Well, I've completely destroyed any semblance of order at UA, which is probably gonna lead to some sort of crime outbreak or attack. But hey, you gotta keep those heroes on their toes, right? They'll thank me later. So who should we invite to UA next? For some reason, the words speed wagon and support course have been haunting my dreams. Let me know who you wanna see next in the comments. Oh, what's up y'all? I hope y'all are taking care of yourselves during quarantine. I am uh, trying to, I've been stuck in my parents' house for like uh, months uh, and that's something I'm, I've done all of my childhood. So I'm not that hype about it, doing it again. Uh, but we'll get through this, trust me. Everyone, please make sure to stay safe, stay inside. Um, we'll keep bringing you the Gin the Robot content that you want. But thank you for watching Gin the Robot. Made in NYC because we can't move to Japan or out of quarantine. I'd love to get the out of here, but <laughs> peace.